Welcome to the Up the Planters podcast on the 2nd of November 2022. I'm Joe Norton, Club Secretary, here with Paul the Planter, our Media Officer, and Steve Eastor, First Team Manager. Um, so, Paul, if you want to start off with some questions for Steve. Yeah, sure. Uh, Steve, obviously, had a good uh, few months since our last podcast, but given us a chance to get an idea of how our season's really gone now. Um, what's your opinion of the season so far, campaigns? Um, any standout performances so far? Anything you're slightly disappointed by? How's your overall analysis so far? Well, I think the first thing to say is what a competitive league it's turning out to be. Um, and there, there certainly isn't going to be a, a Galston or Roxham from last year that looks like they're going to run, run away with it. Um, so... Have I been surprised by that? I think so, a little bit, because the amount of teams that are sort of in the mix, um, some, some teams there that have surprised me a little bit. So it's been very, very competitive. From our own point of view, I think we've, we've dropped more points than I would have liked. We haven't played as many games as I was like. I think we've played the, the second least in the division. So we, we do have games in hand that is probably uh, distorting the table a little bit from our point of view. In terms of standout performance, well, I think you'd have to say that the 10-0 victory at Haverhill was uh, was a little bit unprecedented. I, you know, I've certainly never been involved in a, in a game that's got close to double figures before. So, um, I know Haverhill had their, their problems and their issues on the day. Um, but, you know, certainly that was a, a really comprehensive display but I actually think we've been playing really well um, at the moment um, our performances have, have been good and solid and we probably haven't had all the results that we would have wanted as, as part of that at this moment in time. Yeah I feel like from the sidelines it's felt that way where you know we, I feel like there's been progression on the pitch when you compare to last season and um, performances are you know quite slightly different um, in a positive way um, but there have been some results lately where you just think we've maybe just failed to get the ball in the back of the net to, to really seal the deal. Um, but the performances overall have been pretty good, I'd say. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think we've, we seem to be in a bit of a bad habit of conceding first, which makes the situation more difficult for us, particularly when we play at home and the teams come and are happy to sit in against us. And if we, if we don't score first in those scenarios, it makes it really difficult because it gives them the opportunity just to sit in and, and defend and, and ask the question of us to break them down, which we haven't always had the answers to this season. Our performance in the bars, I thought, again, we conceded first, but we were able to equalise fairly quickly after, and I thought we were pretty dominant in the second half against Barkenside. So we're, I think we're getting close to, to putting that sort of complete performance together, and in many ways, Friday night at Mobile was. I thought we were, for 70 minutes, I thought we were excellent. I thought we played some of the best football that we've played all season, and ultimately we got no points for that. So without wanting to feel a bit sorry for ourselves, I, I don't think we're necessarily getting the rub of the green at the moment, but that comes back down to we've got to, we've got to keep working hard, got to keep believing in what we're doing and doing the right things. Because I, I, the overall quality of our performances in general, I've been really pleased with, particularly when you take into account how young our group is. And naturally, with young players, you will get inconsistency. That just comes as part of it. But I think actually some of our young players have been really consistent. I've got lots of uh, lots of optimism for the rest of the season. And as I said, I think if you generally at this time of the year, you now look, start to look at the table and, and see where things are shaping up. But you can honestly, you can throw a sheet over probably 10, 12 teams that are separated by four or five points. So it, it's very, very tight. Um, and with our games in hand, I think it's it, I think it is skewed a little bit against us at the moment. So yeah, that that would be my general summary of, of today. I think in the last podcast we had predicted it would be quite tight in terms of quite a, maybe four or five teams fancying it. But as you've just said, it this transpired there's about twelve teams <laughs> that are probably quite fancy it yeah. right now. Um, yeah. It's just crazy, isn't it? Um, it, it will be down to who can put a run of games together. At the moment, that's been Hadley. Uh, I think they've now won eight in ten, something like that. Um, and, and in fairness, a, a decent uh, side. You know, we lost one nil to them. I'd probably say we did maybe just about enough for a draw, but we, we certainly didn't do enough to win that game. And 
for me, probably the best side we've played this season. So, at the moment, they've come off the back of a good run. Uh, Ipswich Wonders have put a few results together. Lake and Heath have. So, you know, certainly Thetford and, and Halston have been the gaps closed on them now. And I think it will be going into November, December. Who's going to be next? And, and we'll obviously want that to be us and to put a few results together. That's going to be difficult because it's so competitive. But I think any any team that can do that and, and certainly go and do what Hadley have just done, no, I don't think that's easy. Are going to find themselves, you know, probably in the top three by by Christmas. You mentioned the fact that we we kind of got into a bit of a habit of conceding early or first at least, and then having to to battle back in games that we might be trying to win. So to start off a goal down has, hasn't been ideal. Um, it does did remind me of that game against Kirkley, which was particularly pleasing. We went down to ten men, then conceded a penalty, and it's from that point onwards the team just grew and um, the belief was unbelievable you could just feel it on the sidelines and to turn that around into a 2-1 win was was brilliant and yeah that was probably my favorite game of the season so far yeah uh, I thought we were I thought our reaction on that night in particular was excellent well, well, we've got good character in our group There's, you know we can do that and we've done it on several occasions this season alone so oh. it's, it's not an inability to do that it's the fact that we've given ourselves the task of doing that too many times and what it does, particularly when we play at Plantation Park, it changes the dynamic of the game. When you're playing against teams that you know have come for a point and you concede the first goal, it makes it so difficult because they, they're happy just to sit in their half and don't have to come out. And, and there's been games this year where, you know, we, we've lost it by the odd goal or we've got with Nick to draw, where we score the first goal, the whole dynamic of the game changes. And we've, we, in some of them occasions, we'll probably go on and win three or four nil. Um, and that's our fault because we've, we've not necessarily always uh, punished teams when we're on top in games. We've been, we've been sloppy with our mistakes. But, you know, ultimately, look, you look at Friday night, one communication error between the two centre-halves and one poor piece of distribution by our goalkeeper in 90 minutes has cost us two goals. Now, they are very, very minor, small errors, but they cost us, that cost us two goals. Um, and we didn't get away with those. I don't think there was anyone at Mulberry Park that would have, wouldn't have said that on balance of performance, we were the better team. Ultimately, we didn't, we didn't take our chances and we were punished for our two mistakes. So it feels this year that the, the margins are, of error are very, very fine. Um, and I, I haven't felt like that before at this level of football. Um, but it seems, though, you know, we we get punished for mistakes now, um, where I think maybe previously we, we've been able to get away with things, or maybe we haven't made as many. Um, but this year, the margins definitely seem seem tighter. Yeah, I've sensed that as well. Um, but you think maybe that's something that that will balance itself out throughout the season. But ultimately, if you don't make the mistakes in the first place, you're, you're setting yourself up in, in a much better way, aren't you? But, um, yeah. yeah. And I think I agree with you. And that's this season so far. Um, obviously, we're coming up to that time of year now. We start to, um, due to conditions and the workload uh, for the players, you might start picking up a few niggles and injuries. What's the current status for the players in that regard? Um. Touch wood, we, we, you know, we've still been reasonably fortunate. Obviously, we lost our, our captain um, two games ago. It's torn his calf, so he's likely to be at least another month, I would say, before he's back in training. Um, Geordie Forbes, we're hoping, will come back into training this month. He's had a three, four-month layoff um, with a meniscus problem in his, in his knee. Um, Apart from that, we've only really had any sort of minor niggles. I mean, we lost Albie for a game with a little bit of a groin issue, um, but was then passed a bit for Friday. So, yeah, we haven't had anything else. Um, and, yeah, we, in all honesty, we can't really afford anything else. We're, we, we, don't, um, we don't have a huge squad. And, and as I said earlier, we've got quite a young squad. So... Um, it's important that we keep all our all our key we, players fit. We probably brought in five signings, I'd say, this season with Elvis Putnans, Joel Watts, Michael Campbell, Zach Borner, Kenzie Mason. Um, so are you happy with the impact those players have made so far? I, 
suppose, yeah, all different. E- each one of them, Elvis, um, he, you know, he's a, a big presence physically um, and is a number one goalkeeper. The issue we've had with Elvis is a little bit of unavailability um, with his work schedule. Friday night was was the same. Working in London, couldn't get back for the game, which was a shame. Um, but yeah, I think he's I think he's made a big difference to us in terms of uh, the confidence that he gives um, in 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 how he commands his area. So that was you know that was one that we were really pleased to get in in the summer. Michael Campbell has done done particularly well. Again, I think we're bringing in an older head there who just sort of helps us from a leadership point of view, but. You know he he knows how to play the game. He, he's strong and keeps things alive for us. And and the best thing with him was he hit the ground running straight away. You know he scored on his debut and he's contributed goals. And ever since then, Zach's a, uh, a young lad that we we brought in from Helsen and Dustendale um, and has shown glimpses of what he's about. He'll continue to develop. He's been a little bit stop start. He had a couple of little niggly injuries. Then he had a holiday. We haven't probably seen as much of him uh, as we will do in the coming weeks uh, now that our fixtures sort of ramp up a little bit. Kenzie's come in on, on, on loan from Peterborough, son of Lee Mason, who Norwich United fans will, will remember Brownie from, from his time at the club. He's played in a couple of different positions for us. Again, he picked up a, a knee injury at Fakenham, so he was out for two or three weeks. So he's been a little bit stop-start. We're still just sort of finding the best position for him to go and impact games for us um, and we'll continue to do that as he as he gets fit. He was due to play uh, 90 minutes for the 21s last night which got postponed so he, he missed out on, on that one. Um, what, who was the other one on the list there? Sorry, Joe? Sorry, uh, there was Joel Watts I mentioned. I should have also Joel, mentioned Johnny well, Miller yeah. of course because Johnny's yeah. been suspended. So, so Joel Watts and Johnny Miller. If yeah, you know. Joel's yeah. been great. Um, he's 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 recently been playing in the 10, 10 spot for us um, and, you know, has a, got a good level of understanding and is able to link things and bring players in. Probably not scored as many goals as he would have liked, but um, it, he's, a, he's an influential player when, he, when he's on song for us um, and a great player to have in the dressing room, a good character. Again, you know, knows the, knows the league and knows the standards that we um, want. Johnny's been really unfortunate. Uh, obviously, he had that sending off against Kirkley, and for John, it's just been being able to be available for selection a little bit, which he's been unlucky with. But we've just taken the view now with him that actually, as he's coming towards the end of his career, he can actually offer a lot of value to our under 21. So he he's now coming on board in a in a coach capacity as well. So he'll predominantly play more of his football in with the 21s this year, although he's now got another suspension. Um, but uh, he'll. He'll be a big, big asset to to them. Who they've been, you know, they had a fantastic October. Um, I think that's five five straight that they put together, put them third in the league, which is brilliant because, you know, as everyone in internally at the club knows, our our ambition and desire is to is to get that side out of that league so that we can be more competitive and, you know, that we can attract a better better caliber of youngster, which we have done this year. Casey yeah. Walker, our, our recruitment officer, has been done excellently well with the players that he's he's brought in and attracted the club um some of which have migrated from the 18s to the 21s um and that's a that's a much stronger crop this year to be able to go and compete um and we've also been able to to put in a few older heads recently as well which just knits that all together so that will be johnny's johnny's role going forward which we're, we're really pleased because um he, he's <clears throat> he's a good character sets really high standards for himself and he'll be a, a real positive influence on the young players of the football club. Brilliant. That sounds like an interesting idea and, and why not make use of that experience? Um, so you mentioned the under-21s there. Um, you must feel like real progress is being made. Um, as you said, I think it was four or five wins in a row and that's under the new management of Richard Taylor. So how would you assess his performance and the under 21 Yeah, um, I mean, it's, Richard comes from a youth development background, so this is his first time working at, at that age level. So he's been learning as he's been going as well, um, and you know we, we knew that coming into it. So rightfully, you know, we've always said to him, you know, "There's no pressure on him," and it was very much find your feet, which I think the first sort of few months was as we started to shape a group there that you know we, we're still really, really key on that we can't have players that just come in at that level and are blockers. Um, they've got to be players that have aspirations to be in the first um, team, which is not easy. 
because then boys, they want to be in the first team and they're not. So they've got to be in an environment where that still they can be hungry and they can still enjoy their football. Um, yeah, they've done they've done really well um, and are exceeding our expectation because yes, we want to get out, but we know that that's not easy. And I think uh, I think it's fair to say it would be easier to keep a team in the angling comprem than it is to get a team out of Division One. Um, so it's a big big challenge, but we've had a fantastic month. We, look, there's going to be other other blips and there'll be weeks where they'll be short because I, I need to pull a few and, and we know that will happen but equally we also know that there'll be nights particularly midweeks where we'll be really strong because we can we can give them one or two that will will help and that's the nature of a a, a second side that we can we can do that do that with and that works for you and against you but the, the key thing for us is that we can always be competitive um, and we, that's what you know we've always said that that you know we don't mind losing games at that level as long as we're competitive and last year we weren't and that was a that was a problem um because that was affecting not only the young players it was affecting uh transition of players moving into that group and it was affecting the first team because towards the end of that campaign we were making decisions based on who we could put in that group to keep them in the division now that shouldn't be the case but it was and and um, you know, that's one of the, the beauties of having a Toby at the football club is because he oversees everything. He can he can make those strategic decisions that everything gets the right level of thought and attention. So going into this year, we were very clear as a management group, we cannot be in this position again. You know, we, we, we cannot to the point where I'll be completely honest with you both. We did say, look, if we don't feel we can tackle this, should we be doing it? You know, is it is it more hassle than it's worth? Which is a is a horrible thing to to be discussing because all the people involved in that discussion are youth development people. You know, we all started off working with young players and and are passionate about that and know the work that's been going in at our youth level. Um, and you know we've got a fantastic crop of under 16s this year as well as a good under 18 group and we knew that that would be detrimental long term for the football club so we were we were adamant that we have to you know if we're going to commit to this we have to find solutions um, and part of that was was Casey's role and, and the work that he's done we held an open trial again which is always always useful and we picked up uh, at least three or four uh, lads now who've who played in that group as part of that. We had a real concerted effort to make sure that we, we support Richard um, and make sure that he's got a group that can be competitive. And as I said, that still, even at the turn of the season, took a little bit of time. Um, and, you know, I would certainly wouldn't have expected uh, last month for them to be five and five. So that the fact that they're doing that and they're being competitive and, you know, that's not, that, you know, we're not loading up with first team boys. You know, we might have one or two contracted players and, and that's generally been 19, 20 year olds. You know, I, I can't remember sending them what I would class as a senior player yet this season. They've, they've done really, really well. Um, Long may that continue. And as I said, and as we said last sort of meeting, look, let's not get carried away with it because that's a great month. But, you know, it's given us a platform that we now all believe, and I include the players in that, that actually what we want to do is achievable and is attainable. Um, I think that's given them a, a renewed focus to keep to keep carrying on there. And uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with that. And, and most of all, I'm pleased, I'm pleased for Toby with that as well, because he took a lot of the pressure of that last year and he took a lot of the brunt of that. Um, which wasn't easy. Uh, his uh, hard work and and the and the staff around him hard work is is starting to to bear fruit. Excellent. Yeah, that's really really good and interesting to hear. And uh, looking at the the under 18s as well. Obviously, they had a very good result last night, winning six one away at Bungie. A lot of first year players in that group. Um, so, what are your thoughts on the work done by Alex Fumigali, the manager, alongside um, Ad Ager? Um, and the players, of course. They're very professional, hence why you know we want them with us in terms of what they do and the level of detail that goes into their preparation and how they how they treat it is to a le is to a first team level. If I'm being completely honest, and you know, Ad adding his experience to that group this year, playing you know probably getting on for 20 years in senior football, um, I think uh, adds a lot of value. 
probably uh, comes at it from a different angle to what Alex does in terms of uh, their, their skills. So they complement each other really well. But look, sometimes you can overcomplicate these things. If, if you haven't got good players, you won't be successful. If you can recruit good players, you've got half a chance. And the work that has gone on this year with our recruitment has been excellent. Um, this um, is the first year where we've been coming to the end of the season and we're, we know the players that we're going out and identifying at under-16 level from across the county. So it hasn't been, well, let's see who turns up or, well, could we get... It's been, we're taking him from here, we're taking him from here, we're taking him from here. Uh, and that, that for us has just been a game changer because we knew going into close season pretty much the group that we would be working with. And we knew that they would all be first years as well. So therefore, the aspiration wasn't to win the league. And, and it, ne it never is at under-18 level. It, from you know, I certainly don't put any pressure on the staff at that. From a first-team manager, my prerogative is always how many players can you get that are good enough to get in my side. That always will be the, the, the challenge I would give staff. But that internally, their group was, no, we want to we wanna finish as high up the league as we possibly can and wanted to challenge the Kirkleys and the Roxons, who have been dominant at under-18 level in the last few years, which I think is great. But if you look at the makeup of their sides, they are a lot of year twos or predominantly year twos to our predominantly year ones. Um, and that's a position that we have designed because we want to be we want to be in that boat where next year we will be saying to year twos, look, you're not playing under-18 football anymore. We, Yes, OK, they, they might drop in for FA Youth Cup game. But we don't we don't see that challenging you anymore. You know you need to be playing under 21, or has been the case this year, where Lenny Blythe, Ryan Forbes, Georgie Batch um, are playing first team football. We we want to keep progressing them through our system. So it's not about winning trophies at that level. If you can, fantastic. But it's about how can we develop the individual to give them the highest level of football that we can possibly offer them that is in the best interest of the football club and the best interest of them as a player. And I think over the last two, three years, we've, we've done that collectively uh, really well because I can't put them in the first team if they're not good enough. And, uh, and equally, um, if they're not recruited in the first place, then you know we, we're left as we have been in previous years, scratching around you know a month before the season starts trying to cobble a team together. Um, but the quality... The quality with that 18 group this year is the best it's ever been while I've been in the position at the football club. Excellent. Glad to hear it. Um, yeah, and from the outside, it does look like the whole thing's just a lot more cohesive. And obviously, you've got people like Casey and Toby working across the three levels, really. Uh, and, and yeah, it just seems to be constantly progressing. So glad to hear that's, that's the view from the inside as well. Well, it, it has to. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, everything is very, very short term and you have players who are with you for two years and then they leave. Uh, it, and that's how we want to run it. So that players, you know, once they leave you football, uh, they're coming on a, a footballing journey that is, is there for them. It's mapped out. They can see the pathway. They can see players that have already made that pathway. Uh, and the only real way that they should be leaving that pathway is because they become far too good for us too quickly and they move on to a higher level, which is fine and happens or they're not quite up to it and, and they can't make that journey. And then, then, then it'd be on our terms. But we, you know, we are very mindful of not having those blockers in the system where you know, young, talented players can't progress. So you've had Matty Brown alongside you for some games. Darren Ball's come along as well. Um, you've got Ian Rickett, Steve Middleton. Um, how, how do you, are you seeing the benefits of having brought them on board? Are you happy with what's, what they've brought to the club? Yeah, um, start with Darren. I mean, Darren's got a lot of knowledge. He's been really good. Obviously, he had a good relationship with LV, um, but he's, he's got very high standards in terms of how he works and the intensity that he, he works the goalkeepers. So, you know, that's that's been pretty seamless from, from that, that point of view. Um, Matty Brown, I mean, Matty's a fireman, so the biggest challenge we have with Matty is he just he shifts. Um so, you know, he's not been there as much as we'd like him to. But when he is there, he offers tremendous value. You know, everything that I'd, I'd hoped Matty would 
bring when he's there, he brings. You know, he offers a, an opinion. He's not frightened to voice that opinion, whether it be to myself or, or players. Um, and he, you know, he's got good good knowledge uh, and he's a good coach. And, and that's what we wanted from Matty. Ian, it, it, sadly, we lost Ian just because he he got a job um, and was able to. Uh, leave his, his prison service job here in Norfolk and, and got a job at a university doing what he wanted to be doing and what his degree was in, um, in sports science. So he moved to London, um, which is uh, a shame because he'd been fantastic. And the players had really responded to everything that he'd done. Um, and that is something that we're looking at at the moment in terms of just how we bridge that gap. Um, but having him in pre-season was, was brilliant. Um, and, you know, very much took things to another level in terms of what we were looking to do and achieve. Um, and Steve, Steve's been great. Um, he's a lot of knowledge, but is very diligent, you know, just obviously getting up to speed with her, our processes and, and how we do things. And um, we had a, a, a wider support network in terms of physios this last year, um, where this year we were very much, Steve's the, the head physio. And we're now looking to see if we can get some, some student support in with him. We've, we've now had a few applicants. Now everyone's gone back to university. So um, we'll be looking to do that. But yeah, a lot of that has been um, fairly seamless. And actually, when you lay it out like that, there's quite a bit of change, which um, I probably hadn't recognised how much change there, there was in terms of the backroom team. Um, but yeah, which I think for us, we want to try and keep evolving as best we possibly can in terms of taking that that forward. Only other major acquisition I can think of from the summer, perhaps the biggest of them all, um, is the investment in new pitch. Uh, we've had a good few months of playing on that now, and certainly plenty more of that's come in November, which we'll talk about uh, a bit later on. Um, but yeah. your feelings on on having the the pitch now and um, the difference, if you have noticed any from last season? Well, we were. We waited so long for the sprinklers to be operational in one of the driest summers that I can remember. And then last night we called the game off because it was waterlogged. So <laughs> I sort of sums it up. But the, um, no, it's better. It, you know, it's much better. Um, and we'll continue to get better. I mean, we've done um, obviously a lot of work that's gone on underneath the surface this year. And we've done a fair amount of prep, prep work on the surface. That will get better as as we as we go on and and do another lot next year in terms of prep stuff. Um, but yeah, the, the, I mean, you you only have to if you, if you've got eyeballs, you can <laughs> you can see that see the difference it's made to the to the surface. And um, well, that's you know largely down to two men: one, the chairman, who's invested his his money into it, and two, Jed, who's put in the hours and and love and care and attention to to bring it up to a standard that's for me w what we need to be to be competitive and um yeah obviously thanks to, to both those individuals for for making that happen um and uh yeah it will now stand the test of time because like you said we'll we'll be ramping up the the games on it yeah i think um Certainly going to have to perhaps look into creating some sort of support network for Jed, um, either mentally or literally physically, <laughs> if he needs a hand on the pitch. Because, uh, yeah, as we now go into November, just counting first team games, we've got six uh, home games in the month of November. There's also an under-21s game and an under-18s game potentially on, on the same pitch in the one month. So, yeah, that's um, going to be a, an interesting challenge, um, but not least because that is a lot of games to be played in one month. So how do you approach um, you know, a month like that where you, you've got game after game, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday? Uh, I guess you looking at potentially rotating or do you just play the best team available you've got to you for each game? How do you approach it? Well, firstly, I'm not, I'm not convinced that Jed is actually a human being. Um, <laughs> I, I think he might be part, part robotic. Um, in terms of the, the, the time he spends. Um, but the the fixture schedule, look, I'll, I'll be honest, I like it like that. I prefer playing matches. Um, and, the you know, the, the month we've just had, we've had so many blank Tuesdays where other teams have been playing. 
And I, I hate that because I always feel that's an opportunity for people to pull away from us. Um, and I know some of our some of our Tuesdays this month are, are cup games, um, but they're cups that are, you know that I think we can that we can compete in and do well in. You know, we're not talking FA Cup, and also, you know the financial rewards for that are great. But you know, we're not going to win the FA Cup. Where you know League Cup and Senior Cup, I think we can can do well in those. So they're exciting. And you ask the players, would you rather train or play games? They'd rather play. So you certainly won't hear anyone at our place moan about playing games of football. Um, and like at any level, Paul, you have to, you have to, you have to change your, your group around. I, 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 w- I wouldn't go into this now thinking that I'm going to be playing the same 11 players for six games. Um, because if I did that, by the end of it, first and foremost, my 11 would be exhausted. And secondly, I'd have six, seven players go, well, when are we going to get a game? So, yeah, of course, there'll be a little bit of shuffling. Um, some of that will be based on the opposition that we're playing and what we might want to do tactically. Some of that might be just done on uh, natural availability anyway, because midweekers can, can throw those curveballs in. Um, and some of it will actually be done and designed to give some boys a rest, because um, if it takes someone like Ryan Forbes, for example, at the moment, uh, a Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday schedule for him is too much. You know the, that load through through his young, growing body is, and, and what it does to his knees, just isn't doable at the moment. So we would certainly be him as an example. We would be picking and choosing when and how to use him through this period, as we will do others. Um, but that's not to say that we don't want to be competitive in every game we play, and that will always be the objective. Um, but there will certainly be a degree of rotation as we move into November fixtures. We are playing in four different competitions just in this month alone. Um, See the Saturday coming up, we've got Newmarket at home in the league. Uh, The Tuesday following, uh, we've got the League Cup versus Halston. Uh, So at home, obviously, that's all the games are. Uh, On the Saturday after that, FA Vars second round against Stansted. And the Tuesday after that, and the County Senior Cup against Heacham. Um, so quite a lot of big games, lots of exciting games, and lots of opportunities to get down to Plantation Park, watch some cup football, support local team, beer in hand or non-alcoholic beverage in hand. Can't beat it. Um, but yeah, pleased to hear, Steve, that you kind of approach it with some form of excitement as well, because um, that's certainly obviously how the fans will feel. Um, it's a, a period I'm looking forward to. Yeah, I mean, when you get to this stage, you're a little bit limited what you can actually do training-wise anyway. I mean, we've we've got an agreement with the club that we'll be quite sparing with our use of the pitch for training nights, obviously to try and protect it. And then our floodlit facilities are going to be increasing week after next. We've managed to um, target an area that we can get some light on. So we're going to going to be able to expand what we can do in training but it's you know it certainly won't be 11 v 11 so a lot of the work you're doing now is actually just keeping players ticking over and, and keeping a level of freshness and sharpness um so for us the more games really the better you you very rarely will you you hear me moan about you know fixture congestion or, or playing two games a week you know i feel that we've been missing out by not having that because other teams have been yeah, and it's felt like that from a fan's point of view as well. We want every opportunity to get down. So uh, November is going to be a good month for a fan and uh, hopefully good for the players and the club as a whole as well. Um, so as mentioned, we've got a game coming up on Saturday at home uh, versus Newmarket Town. Uh, what are your thoughts uh, ahead of that game, Steve? Well, it's going to be fireworks, isn't there, Paul? I mean, that's... that's... <laughs> I don't... Look, I'm, if I'm being... Brutally honest, um, uh, looking at the table, I would have expected Newmarket to be higher up it with the amount of teams that are competing. Um, I would have expected them to be one of them, and they're not. Um, but equally, I, I, you know, I know Shinny the manager well. I know, you know, a few of the players they've got there have got good players. So it's similar, similar to Soham. You know, I still look at Soham and think they're one of the hardest teams we played this year, and I. I can't quite put my finger on how they're not getting better or certainly more consistent results. So whilst, you know, we're, we're playing Newmarket who are below us, it, it, 
it's not it's certainly not a game that I'll be looking at and, and taking lightly. I think it's uh, it's going to be a difficult game. Um, and as it seems that every week, you know, we have to be on it and we have to get to our levels um, if we're going to get anything. Um, and because, you know, as you see, Friday night we played really well. You know, and uh, there was lots of really good performances, and we didn't win the game, and we didn't get anything from the game. So it's proven that it's a it's a, a league that is just nothing less than your your seven out of ten. You know, is going to be acceptable, and that's a challenge that the players have to keep keep meeting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Newmarket, I think, are one of the teams that you know. Well, whilst we agreed it was pretty much impossible to predict the season ahead, you would have guessed Newmarket would be higher up. Um, and so, um, having just played them, I agree with you. I thought they they didn't really seem to have any weaknesses and um, were really, really solid. So to see them not, you know, flying in the league just just tells the whole story, really, doesn't it? It's just going to be completely wide open and. Um, that's kind of good news for us, I suppose. Yeah, I suppose it's how you look at it. Uh, look, I mean, what I will say, Paul, is we can't afford to be dropping points Saturday if we want to do anything. You know, uh, we've got a lot of cup games. So the league games that we've got in November, really, we need to go and get maximum points just to stay, just to stay in touch with the teams above us, let alone make any ground on them because a lot of the extra games are cup games. So... Yeah, there's, you know, the group is fully aware now of the expectations that what we have to go and do um, to make sure that we're not getting to the turn of the year and the, the gap's too big. So, big couple of months for us.